Are you guys good to go? Okay. Uh, okay, so it's my turn. So, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to follow up from what Gemini has uh, shared with you guys. And I'm going to show one application of the Raspberry Pi and how I feel that it is actually a very, very good way to get started. So, I'm just going to share with you a bit more about the journey I went through to make that thing you see over there which is an arcade machine. It actually works, I just haven't turned it on yet. I'll turn it on later. And hopefully everyone can appreciate a bit more on what the Raspberry Pi can do. And if there's any questions, uh, try to leave it. You just feel free to interrupt whenever. Okay? So a bit more about me. I have played too many video games when I was younger, uh, around 20 years ago. I have uh, built this, is like, this is actually my second arcade theme project that I've uh, built. It's, they're all kits, they're, all, they're not designed by me, but I find uh, playing, using video games as a medium to motivate yourself to do something like this is uh, much more rewarding. So 20 years ago, you used to have things like this, um, arcade, arcade centers, every shopping mall, top few levels will have it. I remember when I was young, I loved it because it provided games that you could not play on your computer and also because there was no internet at the time some of these games you have no way of getting them and you have no way of knowing say for example what's the last level of that game look like you have no way of knowing so one cool thing about that is that there's this a feeling of mystique about arcade games that makes it really appealing for me and one of the best feelings about arcade machines for me during those times is if you're really good at a game a crowd will gather around you and watch you while you play which uh, will never happen nowadays except online when you stream live. So that experience is gone, right? So in an attempt to build this experience again, uh, not so much to build this experience again, but because I appreciated this experience so much, I was really happy when I stumbled upon this, which is the Adafruits. Uh, Adafruit is a company in the US which developed this kit called the Cupcake Kit back in 2015. And this is the ad that I saw that really uh, got me excited about what is possible. So it's a very short. Thank <coughs> you. It's horrendously soft. Your your computer. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's do that again. I still suck at these games. Okay. Right. <laughs> Adafruit presents. Da, 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 cupcake. Featuring the world famous Raspberry Pi computer and Adafruit Pi GFT display. They've joined forces to play classic 1980s arcade games. It's tiny, it's adorable. Take it to the pizza parlor, take it to the park. It's so incredibly cute, you might just throw up. <sighs> I still suck at these games. Okay, so so this is, this is the really short ever that got me excited about it and really got me into Raspberry Pi despite having no engineering experience. So I got together the kit which costs about 150 bucks on their website, shipped it over, built it in about a week, two weeks or so, and I loved it so much that I thought maybe I'll push it a bit further, and I actually measured out every single piece of this arcade machine, I laser cut it out of wood, and I even tried to custom solder the electronics board inside, just for the heck of it. And I managed to make a little wooden version of it, which I'm quite proud of. This, this took me two months, uh, on and off. So something like this. I have this. Um, if you guys go to the prototyping lab at the National Design Center, I left it there. Because um, they were kind enough to let me use the laser machine to let it get done. So yeah, that was the experience with this in 2015. And after this, I was looking for my next challenge. So the next challenge would be to build something bigger. And I found the Porter Pie built by Ryan Bates in 2016. So this this build this kit was developed by him somewhere in 2015. It cost me about five hundred dollars, including shipping, to get it sent over. Yes, um, so that's what video games can do to you. <laughs> and so 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 bring it over and building it was a challenge and I'm going to use that experience to describe to you uh, what I learned about Raspberry Pi along the way. 
and I'll share with you how it works. So 26 wooden laser cut pieces, they are fairly easy to assemble. There is a PDF manual that Ryan Bates developed for you to follow step-by-step -step instructions. It was my first instance of using wood glue to stick the things together. Fun fact, if you don't use a clamp, when you use wood glue, things will fall apart. Personal experience. And so, so it's just kind of like little woodworking things I never would have gotten into if I didn't build this kit. It uses the very ancient Raspberry Pi 1 Model B because this kit was developed in 2014, so this was all the rage back then. All the modules are connected through the Pi. You can see the buttons and controls are going through the GPIO pins. The audio, there's an audio jack which uh, connects to the speakers. The screen is connected through the HDMI cable at the bottom. The SDA card holds the image on the back and you have your Wi-Fi dongle to let you transfer files to the machine. So I'm just going to go through like section by section of what made up this machine. So the LCD screen you see on it is a 10.1 inch LCD screen which is connected to a driver board. So these are all the parts, the driver board down here and a monitor, serial monitor um, board that lets you uh, watch the status of your screen if you connect the Pi to the board. So this is how the connections go. The cable for the screen goes to this driver board. The driver board is connected directly to power and the HDMI sends the signal to the screen. So interesting thing you notice about Raspberry Pi is that it is more of a central nexus that has to talk to a lot of middleman boards to talk to your hardware. You cannot directly plug your screen to it. Even if you do directly plug your screen to it, it's probably because that screen already has its own board. In, your, in my case, because there was already a, there's only a screen, you need a board to interact with the screen. So that's how that works. And it's just a case of plugging things in to get it to work. That didn't really face any problems. So the audio assembly is a very similar function. You can see the technical details of what it is. Um, in a nutshell, it works in the same principle of having an interface board in the center. This is an audio amplifier which, as the name suggests, amplifies the signal from the Raspberry Pi through this audio jack so that your speakers can actually detect the signals because if you don't have this and you directly connect it to the speaker, you get a very, very small sound. So, there's another case of requiring an intermediary board which provides functions the Pi doesn't have so that you can get the thing to function properly. The buttons and joysticks are the only things that are connected directly to the board. So there are a total of 12 assorted buttons. If you go closer to my board, uh, my, my kit, you can see all of them. They're all connected to various GPIO pins, how, a, how an arcade button works. And I didn't know this. I took this for granted because I only played the game. When you actually build it, you realize that it's a very ingenious device of just pressing a switch and closing a circuit because all these micro switches are open circuits. So if you know your electric, uh, basic electricity, only a closed circuit will allow current to run through. And that flowing current when you press the switch will be detected as input on the GPIO. So that's how a button works. And it's a similar thing of how a joystick works. I connected a joystick to the GPIO and it was the first time realizing that under the joystick there are four micro switches under the joystick. So when you move it left and right, when you hear that clicking sound, when you move the joystick, those are actually your switches under your joystick. And I never realized this before this. It's only through this kit that I got it. And you have your remaining buttons on your GPI Pro pins. So that, that was actually the easy part. The hard part came on the software. After putting the whole thing together, getting the games to work was the biggest pain in the ass for me. I used the RetroPie image. So can we show you the Raspbian image, which is the one for beginners, but there are a lot of images out there for a lot of functions. And if you want to play games on the Raspberry Pi, the RetroPie is by far the most popular tool for simulating old uh, systems on your Raspberry Pi. So when I say emulator, what do I mean? Right, okay, emulators work with ROMs. And what are ROMs? So ROMs are the files that are your games. ROMs are basically your games. But because these games were developed, like you see all these titles, they run on systems that are long obsolete, like your Game Boy, your Super Nintendo, uh, your Nintendo 64, I don't know how many of you own those systems, but most of them are less powerful than your handphone right now. So when you, I've actually tried, when you run an old game on a current system, you have the game move at inhumanely fast speeds, like all the characters move very quickly because the processing speed is through the roof, right? So you have to have an emulator program which is provided through this image to simulate that the Raspberry Pi is actually really old or has these kind of specs to cater to the games. But I don't know whether you can see the text here. This is also the part where most people give up 
because there are just so many games and so many systems out there. We have so many games running on so many systems, and let me put it this way, all these ROMs are illegal, right? Uh, there are not many places where you can get video games from the past legally. Most of the companies who sold the games still hold on to the licenses, so you have to go to your torrent sites and get them. And in fact, the Ryan Bates on his website explicitly has no instructions on where to get ROMs because he can't tell you, otherwise he's promoting illegal activity. So you have to find that out yourself. And what happens when you download illegal ROMs to run on systems is that more likely than not, they won't work or there's no standard way of finding out how it will work, right? It's a pain. Oh, this is the wiki page for the RetroPie um, where they, they write down a list of like, early instructions on what, how to manage ROMs. This is the various emulators. I see all these words here. They're, they're, all, like, they're not named in very sexy names, right? They're all literally named in your files. And so for a beginner who is not familiar with tech, it, my eyes bleed when I read stuff like this. So I only zoomed in on like getting one game to work, which in itself took me one or two weeks to, to happen. So, so ROM, ROMs are a pain in the ass because there's lots of emulations, emulations, lots of games. So you have a lot of inconsistent behavior because most of them are illegal. Um, however, you have this massive online community and the RetroPie community, the RetroPie forum is very big to help you out. Even then, you still have to go through a lot of trial and error process of transferring files, going into specific files, changing specific text in the files to get things to work. So there is a lot of things to learn in the whole world of emulating video games, which I actually didn't realize that this world actually exists for this. So it's still worth trying, if you keep this in mind. There is going to be a lot of frustration and failures when you build a kit like this for your first time. I myself, on and off, I built it. It took me a few months. Um, and it wasn't a case of me following the instructions that everything worked out according to plan. Not really. You have to troubleshoot a lot of things. So that's actually, but the, the result is pretty amazing. I have been able to get this to work on at least two games. And there can be more, just haven't got a time to do it. And if you, I'm going to do a little demo right now for those who are interested. And if not, that's all for this top section of thing. Do you have any questions? Yeah. So that's, so that's taking existing games and then running them on emulators. Yeah. What about offering your own uh, games? Playing your own games? No, creating your own. Creating my own and games. Is there a good platform that exists right now? With the, well, the you can... Too? Not that I, I didn't actually go that route, so I'm not completely clear. But what I do think I know is that you can, like, like gaming's image, you can actually create a game because it has the IDE for Python, if I'm not wrong, right? Does it? Yeah, yeah, better than trying to create a game before an emulator. Yeah, um, so, so you can use the Python and just put from scratch on most default images, yeah. Okay. yeah. Any other questions before I turn the thing on? How do you manage the graphics? The graphics? Yeah. Uh, no, the, the, the Raspberry Pi itself can handle it, right? Um, it's just that its performance, the processor is very slow, because it's very low amounts of RAM. It's the it's Model 1, uh, Model B Pi 1. So I think it's 256 megabytes of RAM, which is horrendously slow. So you will see later, there will be one game which runs smoothly, and later there one game will run in slow motion. Right. This is actually, uh, if I could have a choice, I'd spend money on Raspberry Pi 3 and upgrade my system. But the Pi came with that kit the other time, so I'm just going to stick with it for now. So, yes, you will see that that lack of uh, RAM happening later. Anything else? When you change the Raspberry Pi, it's really different to like when you have the SSD card, it's really different to like when you have the SSD card, it's really different to like when you have the uh, Sorry, say again? You can... So if you switch to the SSD card from version 1 to version 2, so you can just turn off the SSD card and then turn the other one off? Not necessarily, because it, you have to have the correct image. So the Raspberry Pi 1 has a certain image from Ryan Bates' side. And Ryan Bates actually developed for the Pi 3 as well. So it's not completely the same. You actually have to get in another image, writing it the same way that Kim Ming mentioned just now, to get it over on your Pi 3. Yeah. So it's not yet for the image? Not. 100%. The, the dream was for me to drag and not make it happen, but that wasn't the case. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, if there is no questions, I would have to trouble you all to actually look over there. If not, I'm going to plug this into the projector screen. Maybe you guys can see the whole thing like happen like over there. So, just use your... Yeah, I just need two 
好快速啦。主要收嚟佢，主要收嚟佢。好，主要收嚟佢。So I deliberately didn't,、uh, for those who are interested, I deliberately didn't glue the whole thing together. So you can see the various like wires and what later when it comes closer. So this is how the kit works. The bio at the back is supposed to be glued in. So it runs on two power、uh, inputs: one for the Raspberry Pi, one for the speakers and the LCD. So I'm just gonna stick this in here.、Yeah. Okay, then the Pi I'll just plug into your laptop.、Uh. Oh, okay lah. Okay, kita akan buat komentar. Okay, kita akan buat komentar. Okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah, so a nun is flying a plane for some reason. And yeah, that's very much it. So this is, this is the game. Yeah, every one of you will see how bad I am at it. Yeah. But there's infinite credit, so I I I'm not excused. Yeah. Well you want that that crowd experience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this is it, like, like, with my, like everyone's just flying to me and die, so this is like, really easy. So yeah, this is, uh, this is the, oh, uh, see, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you what happens when there is insufficient RAM. Okay, so that's one game that's worked. And I'll show you Metal Slug, anyone familiar with Metal Slug? I love this game, I was really good at it. Back in the day, I could go to the last stage with one token. That was when people surrounded me. Yeah, now I'll die at the first stage for you to see. <laughs> okay, same thing. Uh, it, it, it boots up like your dodgy little software. Yeah, that's, that's to be expected actually. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> So I don't know whether you saw that spike just now. It's already like... Ah, uh, you see? It's not super smooth. Uh, this is the first stage only, so there aren't that many enemies, but when you go like a bit further, you see the thing go in slow motion. Yeah. So now everything is still fine. I, I still got it. Still got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this can be literally a session of like, kind of place computer games. But uh, yeah, this is, this is how it goes. Okay. Yeah, I love this. Oh, okay. So so that's that's it. Uh. There is no two player function. There is a way to get it. There is a way to get it, but um, it's beyond the scope of uh, the current setup. You need to make your own modifications. So this is it. This is, uh, okay. So.